Don't nobody know too much about this joke right here, baby. This is just an inside joke, man. Let me say this, okay? Let's welcome to a new segment. This segment is called The Life and Legend of Eric Rainey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show, E. Rainey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing, big man? I'm doing well, man. Doing well. How you guys? Let me, let me ask you this, okay? You know, I talked to you a couple of days ago. It's just, you know, just want to know how you feel. I'm feeling fine, but <laughs> my man, that's all I need to know. My man, you feeling fine? All right, TV. Fine. Let's see what you got for the Big E. Oh man, hey, great introduction. But before I introduce the man, can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the song, or you know that that we can't talk about the song? Oh man, this is you know E. You played the you know the butt long time ago. You know, <laughs> and back in the day, you see E in the street. E always had the, the, the Coolio hat. You know, the, the, the shirt. Oh you know. my God, you're hilarious. <laughs> Oh man, hey, but great introduction, man. Only us three know the inside joke, and uh, so that's pretty good. But um, today's special guest today is a legend, um, is our guy Eric Rainey. Um, Eric Rainey comes to us, Arlington raised guy. Here we got on our show again, another Wakefield guy, class of '88. That class of '88, man, is special. Um, I'm starting to think this show is slanted or biased or something, man. I mean, every week I got to do Wakefield, Wakefield, Wakefield. You know Let me talk to my Debbie friends. That's what I said. The funny thing, we both graduated from Debbie Why are we doing all this Wakefield? <laughs> hey, maybe because they were they were real legends. Oh, all right. Debbie hey, people, Buck said that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get back. Let's get back. Our special guest today is Eric Rainey. Eric Rainey, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. Doing really good. We're we going to jump right into this, man. We got a long, maybe hour worth of show of getting into you and find out about the legend of Eric Rainey. And for the, those kids that's growing up now that don't know who Eric Rainey, you're going to find out who Eric Rainey is. Eric, can you just tell us a little bit about growing up in Arlington? What was it like for you? Wh where'd you live? And all that good stuff so people can put in their minds where you, where you grew up at. Yeah. Um, young, young toddler, maybe, you know, uh, one, two, three, grew up on Monroe Street. Um, and, uh, you know, spent a lot of time in all the recreation centers around. Grew... Walter Reed, Carver Center. I was just, I was just a street kid, man. Love being outside. Love playing. I'm all over Arlington, man. Just, I, I seemed like I hung with everybody, knew everybody. Um, moved to Pollard Street. <clears throat> um, probably seven or eight. Went to Randolph Elementary School, then to uh, Thomas Jefferson Middle School, and then and then to Wakefield. Um, but I just, I remember, man, just a lot of fun. You know, growing up in Arlington was a lot of fun. Um, sports was always a part of the a part of the scene. Um, you know, hanging with my my, my brother Reggie and, and his friends, and um, had a group good group of friends myself, and uh, it was just a lot of fun, man. Hanging up and hanging out in Arlington was a lot of fun. Now, did did, did you grow up playing with a you know a specific uh, team uh, like you know the Carver, the Drew, Red Top? <laughs> I um I, I tried basketball, man, but I had a problem with traveling, like because football was my thing. So the ball would go underneath my arm, and you know I just kept getting, and then you know I couldn't run over people, so I kept getting charges. So I would use all five fouls um, <laughs> relatively quickly, and so basketball it, it didn't take me long to realize that wasn't my sport. <laughs> but football, man, football, football in Arlington, um, and then baseball in Arlington. That's what I was going to say. Did, didn't you play baseball as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I uh, started at the top. There was a little field at the uh, – when you walk the back trail, leaving Wakefield, um, I forget the, the, the school that's right across the street. Claremont. Wakefield. Claremont, right. We used to practice there. We could play with the Mustangs first. And then we'd walk through the woods down to Barcroft. And Barcroft is a place to be, man. If you, just, if you weren't at Barcroft, you know, you just – you weren't anywhere. And so – I think I played D-League up at Claremont, and then you went down to Barcroft and played maybe 19, 11, 12-year-old. Um, and then when you started on the small fields, your goal was just to make it down the trail. You walk down the trail, you get to the 13-year-old field. You walk through the little path through the woods, and you get to the 15, 16-year-old field. You know, so as a little kid, man, your goal was to get to that next yeah. field. And, uh, and I, I just matriculated all the way through, man. And it was really, really fun. And football the same way. Um, playing Black Knights up at TJ. We used to practice up on the hill. Um, Jimmy McKinney, Sam Fox, man, some of the old coaches, uh, Mr. Purdy, 
Uh, it was different back then. You jumped off sides and practiced Sam Fox. He wore these uh, steel toe boots. He put you in a three-point stance and kicked you square in the tail. <laughs> and parents watching. I mean, that, that's how it was back then. But, you know, they had all the groups playing on that same field. You know, so I saw, you know, my brother's team, Roger Latney, uh, Hayes Andrews, Eric Steele, Rudy, Alan Glasscock. You would always want to get to that next pound. And Saturdays, we play at Yorktown. And man, it was just football all day long. You know, it would start by weight, 65 pounds and 85 pounds, 95 pounds, and so on and so forth. And so, you know, you always aspire to get to the next pound, to get to the next level. Um, because you looked up to those guys, man. You wanted to be like them, you want to play like them, uh, you wanted to make a name for yourself. And so it was football and baseball all the way through. Okay, I'm a, I'm I'm a I'm a fast forward for like two seconds, then we're gonna go back, okay? Now, yeah. you said something about bar cross, okay? Yeah. I just need to know, when you got to high school, did you used to go to the back bar cross at the end of the night, back in the, and then the, <laughs> cut the party, you know, where they got busy, you know? The, I, don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. I, have no, I have no idea what you're talking about. My, my bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what you're talking about. Let's, let's get back. Hey, let's get back to your, your middle school year. <laughs> so, no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> So, E, when you, when you played Little League sports at all those in middle school, yeah, and you went to middle school with a lot of those guys played sports, then by the time you guys hit high school, yeah, and we, all, we like to ask everybody on the show that grew up in Arlington, were you separated from your teams because everyone went to different high schools as well? A lot, a lot of guys I played Little League with, we ended up, particularly baseball. Like, when, I, when we got to high school, it was, um, you know, Tony Wallen, Chris Levat, um, Putt, Darnell Stewart, Todd Thrasher, like all the guys that seemed like we came up through Black Knights baseball, a lot of us played together in high school. And okay. uh, we had some really, really good teams um, at Wakefield baseball. Luke Bear was one of the best left-handers I'd ever seen. Uh, Steve Koss, um, Chris Levatt, man. Chris Levatt was one of the best base, Little League baseball players. I think he hit eight home runs right-handed and seven left-handed. Wow. And it was, yeah, Chris was a beast. Um, Earl Stroud, it was like, as a young kid, because I always played up, um, Earl Stroud was another, just a real big kid, man. I remember seeing him on the mound. It was like a man on the pitcher's mound. Um, there's another dude, Quan Lee. Um, his brother was Yin Lee, ran track. Quan Lee was another. I mean, it was like six, four, five, playing Little League, man. They would pitch. I'd be up there just trembling, man. Uh, I was intimidated, but we, it was a lot of talent. A lot of talent came through um, Arlington. Both football and baseball. Now, now what, what, what position did you play uh, in baseball? Um, I pitched a lot when I was young. Um, got a few dingers hit off me. Um, uh, played, yeah, I played all over, man. Played a little bit of infield. Um, my claim to fame was the outfield once I, you know, I dabbled. We fortunate enough to make some all-star teams. Went down to Richmond with a 12-year-old team. We did pretty good. Um, I get to Wakefield. And uh, I started as a freshman um, on, the, on the baseball team. So played with some, varsity? some tap. Huh? On varsity? Yeah, well, yeah, Coach Belgium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, played, uh, played with some talented guys. I started at third base and had about nine errors uh, in two games. And then I got moved to the outfield. And that's where, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I spent the rest of my time. But, you know, at Wakefield, there's no, feet, no fence out there. Right. So, you know, we knew that fence. I played uh, left. Uh, Tyrone Smith, put we called him, played center. Tony Porter played right, man. And, and we'd suck up everything, man. We got to the point where we, I mean, we knew, like, either I was diving for a ball in the hole or he was diving for a ball. We'd back each other up. We, we didn't give up on home runs, man. But you hit a ball in the gap, it's a home run because there's no fence in <laughs> <laughs> But just, just, just for our viewers, I just want you viewers to know I'm not for sure when the last time Eric Randy's been home. But Wakefield's a brand new school now. We have a nice, beautiful fence out there. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of new additions to Wakefield. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm truly living through your baseball stories because I remember when I played T-ball as a four-year-old, and that was the only time I ever hit the ball in my entire life was off the tee. That's why baseball wasn't my sport. I'm just putting it out there, too. So, I mean, they say you have to have eye and hand coordination. My man. Didn't work. <laughs> No, <laughs> so that wasn't a sport for me. I, I know y'all have had you've had Joe Law on the show. You've had 
one of those on the show, both really good, good baseball players, man. Mike Ross, another, uh, Myron Stewart, other really good, I mean, all the, all the Yorktown cats, uh, Dougie McIntosh, Richard Conklin, a um, bunch of those guys, and Bruce Heon, there's a lot of talent in all these teams. Yeah. Right. Now, now, let's switch over a little bit from baseball. Now, let's talk about the thing you love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Miller Lite or Milwaukee? <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I'm just joking. Let's talk about that football, man. Let's talk about that football, man. <laughs> this dude is. <laughs> Let's talk about that football, man. Tell us a little bit about you. You growing up playing football? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I loved it. You know, I, I loved everything about it, um, particularly the contact. Um, from the time I remember, me and Warren Doles, we on uh, I don't know, 65, 75 pound, and this is the Oklahoma. Oh yeah. You like on your back here and you on your back here. They blow the whistle. And it was just like two battering rams. I think me and Warren both knocked ourselves out. It was a collision, man. It was epic. Um, yeah, it, it was – I just love the contact, man. I love hitting – I had – I think I had 32 total stitches in my head before I was six or seven. I, I fell off a wall. My mom said I jumped off a wall on Monroe Street. I think I got 14 or 15 on this side. And then when I was 11 or 12 playing – Sandlot football at my aunt's house in Richmond, Virginia, in the courtyard. I run into a pole and got another. I mean, they both gash my eyes. So both I, I had stitches, yeah. lots of stitches before I was in my teens. Wow. Um, and so I didn't mind running into people like as right. hard as I possibly could. And that that ended up being like my claim to fame. Like I just I, I like hitting people. When I ran the ball, and I ran the ball like I was playing defense. Um, so it, it was great. I loved everything about it. So coming into Wakefield as a freshman, you were a starter on the baseball team, but that was afterwards. So football season starts first. Where, where did you land at playing football at Wakefield? Were you JV freshman, varsity your freshman year? Yeah, so um, I played, fortunate enough to play, I played JV as an eighth grader. Mm -hmm. Was it eighth grade? Yeah. I, I played JV as no, I played freshman as an eighth grade. Yeah, played, for, played for Coach Terry Collins, okay. um, and uh, we we had a we had a really good team that year. I think you know I I, I have to check with is Frank still the statistician? At, yeah, <laughs> Frank, I've already talked to Frank. He'll be check, check Frank. I think I ran for three hundred and twenty yards against Annandale my freshman year. It was, wow. it, was it was it was it was good it was a good day. But Coach Collins, man, he he ran a good program. Uh, we enjoyed playing for him. Um, and then um, my 10th grade year, no, at, at the end, I think the end of my freshman year, or it might have been the middle of the year, I was asked to, 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 to move up to varsity. Um, and I, I didn't want to do that. Like I wanted to, I wanted to be a part of, of Mr. Lee's, Bill Lee's program. Um, and so um, I, I, I chose to play with, play with Coach Lee, man, and it was, um, I, I adored the man, I loved the man, um, respected the man, and so I, I had to do that. I didn't go to Wakefield, but I always wanted to be coached by Mr. Lee, man. Everybody loved Mr. Lee with his shorts on in the wintertime, <laughs> greatest guy. He, yeah. I would go in the locker rooms after the game because I knew all you guys, and Mr. Yeah. Lee would be in there cleaning up. Man, that, that guy is a true legend, and, yeah. and God yeah. rest his soul, but Mr. Lee was yeah. Yeah, me, me, me and Kevin Gaskins were, um, I forget, we were probably doing something, we had no business. We late for practice. And back in the day, there was some woods that separated the top of the hill, which is the old baseball outfield where we should practice at, and coming up from the locker room. So we know we late. They would run two laps to start. So me and Kevin going to wait in the bushes until they come around, and we just going to jump in the line. As we tried it, Mr. Lee said, oh, come here, son. Come, come on, come here, come here, come here, come here. And if you got in trouble, Mr. Lee, you had to do chest drops. Yeah. Y'all know with chest drop, you get in push-up position, you just your arms got to go out, and you just hit your chest. Uh-uh, uh give them to me, son. Uh-uh, give them to me. Give them to me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was good times, man. So good. with that said, mm -hmm. and now you, you move on to your varsity career as it takes off. And, and for most of you people that don't know, Wakefield wasn't the best football team back then. You know, they, you might have you might have won the fight, <laughs> lost the game. So talk about you know your time at Wakefield and, and building that because I do remember E. I was in the stands uh, one night. I believe it was homecoming, 
everybody's ready to, you know, have a good time, and Eric Rainey gets hurt. Yeah. And I remember being in the stands, and the air just went out of the stands when that ambulance came on the field to attend to you. Can you, you talk about that night? I won't say special night, but that was a yeah. scary night for you. Yeah, it was tough, man. Um, we had put a lot of work into um, me, JV, Chris McPhil. We had a special team. We really did go into my senior year. Um, Kenya and Rodney, Kevin Creed. I mean, we had a really solid football team. And um, we lost the opening game in Yorktown, which, of course, just absolutely destroyed us. But we come back and we win uh, the next five. We're 5-0. We beat a good Hayfield team. We're 5-1. and one. Like, our whole goal was to leave Wakefield with a district title, right? Something that hadn't happened in a long, long time. We, we put in a lot of work. We met in the summertime. Randy Lyons was our quarterback. You know, called him shotgun. He just dropped I and mean, then throw it deep. Um, we had a good football team. And we worked that summer incredibly hard. Like, no coaches were there. Like, me, the captains of the team, Mitch McIntyre, JB, I think Chris Hickman, we would – orchestrate our practices and we would have the whole team man we'd run an offense we'd run a defense we'd run the whole thing man so the preparation we went into with that year was we were very intentional like we knew what we wanted to do we wanted to leave our mark on that on Wakefield from a football standpoint and we were headed that way we're five and one we're rolling we played uh, West Potomac man we're very very good football team they had a running back Reggie Wedge it was 6'2 220 something like that and I think it's second quarter and I mean, it's eight nothing. So it's a ball game. We playing and uh, he get breaks loose and I go to tackle him from behind and it's a freak as it can be, man. It's a Joe Theismann type deal. He's running. I go to chase him from behind. And while he's striding, my arm comes right in between his stride and he just snaps it. Mm. And um, I thought I hit my funny bone. You know, I go to pick my arm up off the ground and shake it like you hit your funny bone. And my arm is like this dangling, but it's right here. Uh. Um, and I'm just like, you know, Chris McPhail, I think, was the first one there. And he's screaming. It, it, it was bad. It was bad. And it, it was bad because you know, football was all I had. Like, football was it, you know. Um, I put all my marbles in that bag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There was no plan B for me. Right. Um, I heard Warren talking about, you know, just not taking academics seriously. And, and neither did I at all. Like, I was going to football on a scholarship. And that's all I knew. And that's... So uh, when that happened, man, it was, um, it, it was, it was traumatic. Um, I credit Alan Glasscock. Alan had, um, I think, dislocated his collarbone his senior year, missed the rest of his, his senior year. So um, he was able to, to, to coach me up and, and help me through a very difficult time because I really didn't know what else I was going to do. Like, if I didn't have football, I really did not know what I was going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it, was, it was tragic, but in hindsight, um, you know, when I reflect on it, it was uh, it was a difficult time, but but moving past it and then being able to experience some of the things that I have, it was uh, it was an incredible learning experience for sure. Wow, wow! I mean, you just took the show way down, my man. I mean, <laughs> I'm, over, I'm over here feeling bad for you, like. <laughs> See, the, hey, that's what you get for playing doing the butt and starting the show. <laughs> but but I, I got to go back just a little bit because I'm a man of details. Okay. Yes, sir. A few minutes ago, you said when you got your 32 stitches, you said, your mom said you jumped. You said you failed. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Where was your brother? I had pushed me. I don't know. We was off the track. <laughs> <laughs> so your mother was trying to cover up. <laughs> uh, we we yeah. were something else now. I'm telling you, we were a handful. <laughs> we were a that's handful. Like, that's like If you don't have any cuts and bruises, you wasn't out there doing what you're supposed to do. You wasn't out there doing what you're supposed to do. That's it. Like you, you, you said when you got what's it called? What's it called? Huh? The lay down on your backs and you hit oh, each other. Oklahoma. No, no, no. It's called the um the um this this nutcracker or whatever <laughs> is why the people play basketball because they don't want to do <laughs> they don't want to do the hit and all, all that stuff. So kids play basketball now, right? They don't have the toughness. No, I remember. In the, playing in the back alley, if you didn't run to a, a run into a, a street sign or something, it bust your head, and then you went right back out. Then you went right back out. Oh yeah. yeah. Nowadays you got a concussion, you out five months. Correct. Correct. Yeah, I've been concussed my whole life. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> we know. We know. So, so we're gonna get, we're gonna keep moving. So, 
with Eric's plan going back, as, as like he said, wasn't a good student. All the marbles in one basket for football. Um, you were fortunate enough to go off and play college football. So yes. thankful for that. Yes. Talk about your experience at your college at Farron, where you went, and, and, and anything else about going, leaving Wakefield. Yeah, so I was, uh, I'll be forever grateful to Coach Collins, Terry Collins, man, because, um, yeah, I really didn't know what I was going to do. Played baseball uh, that spring. It's fortunate, you know, it was Dr. Peter Delenic was my surgeon. I remember like it was yesterday. It was a clean break. It put two plates on each side, 16 screws, hit up fine, played baseball that spring. Coach Collins, man, put me, JB, and Mitch McIntyre in his car and took us to Farham College. And as a, as a 51 year old now, looking back, that was pivotal in, in, in my life, right? Um, you know, parents didn't really know, as most parents don't, about you know, the whole recruiting thing and football and kind of how to navigate that. But him putting us in his car and taking us to Farham um, and really handling all of that with, um, you know, making that connection, um, it was pivotal. Like to me, getting my degrees and all of that, it was absolutely pivotal to where I am now. So I will forever be grateful. And I tell them every time I, I talk to them, I'll, I'll always be uh, committed. And it's why I was the type of coach that I was. And I think we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but just that commitment to making sure that I was, that his players were going to be okay. And he wasn't the head varsity coach. Right? He was, um, it was a freshman coach and a conditioning coach. And, and he took it upon himself to do that for us, and I'll just be forever indebted to him. Um, and my time at Farham was incredible, man. I, I arrived at Farham in 1988. They had gone from junior college to division three. And, and I remember me and JB walking in like, these are some big dudes, man. <laughs> and it was a bunch of division one players, man. We lost, we lost two games in two years. Um, now, fortunately, at the same time I transferred there, Chris Warren transferred there <laughs> you know, from UVA. So having Chris Warren um, made some things really, really enjoyable for us. But we, we, we just had a talented, talented team, man. Uh, All-American linebacker David Harper, uh, corner Melvin Dillard, um, the, my boys, uh, Kevin Sherman played receiver, Ron Adams played corner. We had a good, good football team. So, and we just beat the brakes off people, man. Frostburg, uh, Salisbury State, Guilford, we just beat the brakes off the people. And it was beautiful. It was good football. Um, Stayed there two years. Um, had, I had an interception my very first game. Played Emory Henry. Um, you, you mature as a college football player. I think Warren and Joe Lowe talked about it. You learn things that you just didn't know, like the mental side of the game and the preparation side. Watch so much film. And um, the interception happened just like my coach said it would happen if a particular play happened and I did my job. And I ended up with the ball in my hand. Um, and so there's a lot to be said about the mental part of the game as you mature. Um, moving into my, my second year, I had a two interception game player of the week against Salisbury State. So I started to think, man, I need to, I need to move. I need to get to a higher level, which was still that young person's mentality. I got to play D1. <laughs> um, transferred to Towson and it was just a different scene. Everything about it was different. The feeling was different and I uh, played a year of spring ball, man, and, and hung it up. Um, you know, got my degree, which was you know, one of the, Coming from how I struggled in school, um, I've spoken to lots of families and, and people uh, in, in different roles, and, and I tell them, I, you know, I failed the fourth grade, um, which is, was traumatic at the time. I still remember like, the weather was outside. I remember everything about that day. I remember the walk home, um, and, and I failed because um, I just, I didn't apply myself. Like I had two parents, I had all the support. I just, I was hard headed and I just didn't do things. I didn't study, I didn't do any of that stuff. And, and I do remember <clears throat> like being afraid to raise my hand, like being afraid to be wrong, right? And I tell kids now, I wish I would have been wrong because the feeling of failing never leaves you. <laughs> like if I would have just raised my hand and had the wrong answer, that would have been, I would have had the right answer eventually and moved on. Right. But as a result of not raising my hand and having a fear of looking stupid, um, that feeling of failing does not go away, right? So I tell young people, don't, don't do it. Like, ask questions. Raise your hand. Don't do what I did. <laughs> so you don't have to feel that. Um, so just, just learned a lot, man. And, um, but, but able to, uh, now able to, to use that to help a lot of young people. 
fortunate for a lot of experiences, good and bad. Now, let me let me ask you because um, you said you had you had a clean break and he put the screws and everything in your arm. Huh? Let me ask. I don't know, but I'm just going to ask. Um, like when you walk through the airport, do you have to get like <laughs> <laughs> everything's about a uh, joke? Hey, do they pull yeah. you out because you have a plate in your arm? We didn't fly, man. We didn't fly. <laughs> no, no, down there, down there. Is the plate still in there? No, I mean, no. Uh, they had to take it out. in order for me to play again. They had to take it out. Okay, okay. That's yeah. a, so you didn't fly because. <laughs> South Arlington. <laughs> so, I'm gonna try. It's hard, listen, ladies and gentlemen. It's hard to try to be a, a host of the show with this dude, but I'm trying. So, let me get it back real quick. So, yeah. E, with all that, you found yourself graduating, yeah. getting your degree, and you came back to your roots to Arlington County. Yeah. What'd you do after you graduated? Came back to Arlington County. Yeah. So I had worked recreation probably. Um, I don't know, since I was 15, Arlington County Recreation. Oh, yeah. um, mom got me a job. Um, my mom owned a daycare center, so that was my first volunteer job, working in a daycare center with her. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed working with kids, man, and uh, got on with Arlington County Recreation. And I worked summers all the way through. So when I graduated from, uh, from Towson, I came back home and, and like immediately had a job and was the director of a team program. Um, oh, man, it was up in uh what's up columbia pike i forget the name of the park um but yeah i worked arlington county recreation and um i was i was director of a, a team group and i took them to wakefield for a basketball game and dr Jawadi was the principal and you know we have a conversation hey eric what are you doing now i just got my degree in physical education um before you mr lee had passed away and she said um you know we're looking for someone to replace mr lee have you ever thought about teaching Absolutely not. <laughs> I had never thought, I just answered the question. Um, but it's something else I tell young people, man, I, I was, I, I did some crazy things in high school, but I was always respectful, right? I was always respectful. And for her to consider me for that job, it was huge. And she's another one I'll be forever grateful to, you know, for giving me, I'd never been in a classroom teaching in my life. Um, but just because of who I was and how I carried myself, she gave me an opportunity to replace Bill Lee, of all people. Um, and so I felt pressure. <laughs> I felt um, it, it was a great feeling, and it was the best thing that could have ever happened, man. I had an opportunity to, to, to teach and then start coaching. It was incredible. And so I, I think I, I taught and coached at Wakefield for four or five years. Um, really, really good experience. Cool. You you coach under the tutelage of uh, Ron Fowles. <laughs> this guy right here. We we I coached coach, we, we coached uh, <laughs> we coached together. Yeah, we we weren't we coached together, and then he was uh, he was moved to head coach, and so yes, I was I was under the tutelage of Ron Fowles. Yes, I was. Oh, ble 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 as he would say, bless your heart. <laughs> Great times, man. Great, great. Super passionate. Um, the time at Wakefield was, it was, it was incredible, man. It was just really, at first, going back, I'm working at the school I graduated from. So I'm, I'm hanging out with all of my old teachers. So uh, I started playing golf. So Coach Veldrin, Coach Tom, Mr. Bernhardt, Mr. Perna, Mr. Go Freddy, a bunch of guys would go play golf in Ocean City. So I'm now hanging out with Homo teachers, <laughs> yeah, which is a lot of fun, but it was, it was off the chain. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. So then you you from Wakefield you started coaching. Yeah, and then what happens? Because I know that you know following your story the last few years or whatever it may be, you went on to become a, a big time coach in High Point, North Carolina. Can you talk about your time down there? Yeah, it was. Um, so I moved. I, I I was at Wakefield. I think four or five years. I went. I joined the sheriff's department. Um, to Ron Files and Gizmo Cifuentes' suggestion, right? I go join the sheriff's department. <laughs> it's been three, they, three years in the sheriff's department. I'm like, uh-uh, uh, no, this is not for me. <laughs> Let me go back with kids. <laughs> so, um, you know, just trying to figure out how I'm going to make the move. Um, Brent Quarles, another Arlington guy, was a uh, supervisor over in Fairfax. So he brought me on with Fairfax Office for Children. I was there for three years. I worked my way up to a supervisor there for one of the sites. And then um, just out of the blue, man, I get a call. 
from, so at FAM, my, de my defense coordinator's name was Dave Davis. His son's name was Brian Davis. Brian was the ball boy when we were there. I get a call, I'm living out in Lorton, and it's Brian Davis. He's like, hey man, you can come to North Carolina and coach with me. Well, I'm not going to North Carolina, you know what? Well, my other buddy, Kevin Sherman, who I played with at FAM, was coaching at Wake Forest. Firm called me. He's like, hey, Brian just called and said, you know, he wants you to come. I'm not coming to North Carolina, man. I'm not leaving my mom. I'm not moving to North Carolina. That's country. <laughs> well, my wife's mom lives in Greensboro still. So she's like, well, let's just go look. Well, you know, 17 years later, I've been in High Point, North Carolina. Wow. So, um, yeah, so <clears throat> I was at Wake, uh, Southwest Guilford High School, man. I was, I was there for two years, kind of bounced around doing some coaching and teaching. Get back to Southwest, I think 2007, and I'm just there working. I'm graduation coach. Um, and the, the meantime, I'm coaching my oldest son in youth football. So he gets, he's making his way up through, and he's a, he's a nice sized kid, and I think he's got some potential. He's working his way up. And so he arrives at the high school. And I said, well, let me start coaching high school again. Well, the head coach of the high school steps down. And I apply for the job and I get it. And uh, I, prior to that, I had, you know, I thought about getting back into coaching. I had an opportunity to go down to South Carolina and be a head coach. I turned that down just because my boys were young. Um, and I didn't think it was the right fit. This works out, and it, it, it was an incredible experience. Not only did I get to coach my son, actually, I got to coach both of them when my youngest got up there, um, but I actually, my son was the quarterback at the school. Um, so his JV year, we don't have freshmen, JV year, they go undefeated, you know, first time since, I don't know, 25 years at the school. So his class set a precedence at that school. Um, Administration was incredible. My coaching staff was incredible. And, you know, we, 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 I think we've got the best four-year record that that school has ever had in their history. Um, first nine-win season, I mean, it, it was not a football school. It's kind of like Wakefield. They just had not, they hadn't broken 600. You know, the school was built in 79. They may have had a winning season, 80, 81, something like that. But they hadn't won <clears throat> more than six games in over 20 years. And by year, so the year prior to me taking over, they had won one. So my first year, we won two. Second year, I think we won four. And by year three, I think we won nine. Um, three, I think three or four uh, state playoff appearances. Um, just, it, was, it, was, it was a run for the ages. And here, one of the things that kind of epitomized our run. So there's three neighborhood, there's three uh, county schools, just like Wakefield, WNL, Yorktown, mm -hmm. Southwest, Andrews High School, Ragsdale High School. They had not beat an, a High Point Central. Our school had not beat any of those other three high schools in 17 years. Like, so it was like a curse. <laughs> like you just knew you were gonna lose. Um, and the first year Andrews beat us 66 to nothing. At, it was called Simeon Stadium, it's County Stadium, 66 to nothing. The official leans over to me in the third quarter. He goes, coach, you want me to run the clock? And uh, I said, Bleep, no, I want you to run the clock. I said, we're going to take all of this. We're going to take every last bit of it. I want, I want to remember it. I want these kids to remember. I want my coaches to remember. I want everybody to remember what this feels like. Yes. Um, I stepped down two years ago. They hadn't beat us since. Wow. They, they had not beat us since. We beat all three. We were the county champs for two years in a row. We just did some incredible things, man. And I, I was just fortunate to, to be a part of it. Right. So let, let me ask you, how, how was the experience coaching your own child I mean it was I mean, um it, it was it, it was it was I gave him the option right because I told him this is what I told him um you know I, he had proved himself as a pretty good quarterback I said the the eyes that are going to be on you I said you won't be able to sneeze wrong and someone will be telling me so I said you can go to another school and not feel the type of pressure you'll feel feel here and he said no nah, dad I want to I play I want to play with you and um and that was incredible, man. And we, it was beautiful. <laughs> like it was, and there was some time I coached him all along. I coached him harder than anybody. I coached him. Like my wife would get mad at me. It was ridiculous. You know, I'd come home. I, we wouldn't talk. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't all wrong. People were like, Oh, that's so nice. Well, no, nah, it ain't always nice. You know? Um, 
And so, it, 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 but it was, I think he'd tell you the same thing, man. We wouldn't, we wouldn't trade it for anything. And we were able to accomplish some, some really, really great things. I'll tell you another good story. So one of the schools that we beat, um, we hadn't beat them in 17 years. <clears throat> the stadium is packed, right? And uh, we're winning. And so our side is just electric. People are going crazy. It's, you know, two minutes and something left in the game. I call a play that looks like a reverse, right? It's not a reverse. It's just a simply fake ISO, and it's just a little end around. Well, somehow the ball ends up on the ground. They scoop and score with less than two minutes. Now they're winning. Our sideline is like kids are crying. Coaches' headphones are being thrown. Like everybody's going nuts, right? So one of my other coaches, Coach Vogel, he's like, man, your son and another kid, Jeremiah Brown, who will likely hopefully be in the league soon, um, they're on the bench and they're talking about the plan. Both of these kids come off the field. First, Jeremiah comes off, smack me on my butt, like, Coach, we good. My son comes off the field like that. Boom, we good. We good. Me, I mean, amongst the chaos, they kick the ball off to us. We return it to maybe the 30-yard line. First play from scrimmage, I call MP4. That's four verts. Jaren throws the ball over the middle of the field, 40 yards, hits our little slot receiver, 40 yards, right? They get on the ball. It was a the best bag on two minute drill I've ever seen. We go two quick outs. Now we're on their 20 yard line and it's a minute left. And I call, like essentially it's double outs with goes. The middle of the field opens up, he runs in. Now we're up with, I don't know, 50 some seconds left, right? Now it's really going crazy. <laughs> and, um, you know, we kick off the damn stop and we win the game. They storm the field. It, it was absolutely incredible. I mean, it, it's something that you would read about in a story or something, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I'm almost in that same predicament where I got my son, who's a freshman this year, and I know he'll be coming up the ranks. So I'm just trying to mentally prepare myself, yeah. whether to resign to tomorrow. <laughs> that way I can have communication with my wife. Like you said, you didn't talk to anybody. Everybody, ah, I just need to know where I need to be. Yeah. yeah. That ride home. Should he ride with his mom or should he ride with his dad? Because if you ride with me, it's going to be 45 minutes of, man, I mean, what would you, man, I mean, why would you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Now I understand. <laughs> it's good. It's good, though. It's good. But just yeah, know I mean, it's, going, it's going to come with some challenges. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Because, you know, I'm going to be I'm gonna be on the bench with all this. So <laughs> we're going to be calling you, E. We're going to be calling you. I got I mean, you. It, it's got to be nice to be able to coach your own son. You know what I mean, E? You can coach him like you want. My bad, Tony. <laughs> he's he's, he's, he's ruthless. He's ruthless. Because I got all daughters, man. He's See, ruthless. I, man. He, I, I said my bad, my bad. Terrible, man. This dude. Anyway. He's ruthless. So he really I'm apologize. <laughs> you couldn't have a son. I'm apologize. Listen. <laughs> this is the life and legend of Eric Rainey, okay? Let's let's stay on that, all right? <laughs> So, E, with that, just talk really quick. What, what's your son up to now? And both your sons, what are they up to? Yeah, so um, Jaron received a scholarship to East Carolina University, was there for two years. Um, there was a coaching change, change in philosophy. So um, the, one of the coaches that recruited him there was hired as the head coach at Hampton University. And so he, you know, found out Jaron was interested in leaving. And so long story short, Jaren, he's now at Hampton um, doing good. He just had his third shoulder surgery, so he's recovering. Fortunately for them, their season got canceled, so it, it, it was ideal for him to have this time to recover. And uh, so looking forward to him, um, you know, continuing his playing uh, career. Uh, my youngest is a, is a senior now. They're, my Both my boys are – Jaron's six two and a half. My youngest is six three. Like, everybody looking at me crazy. I'm like, they get it from their mom. Right? Yeah, I was going to say that, E. Hold <laughs> on now. I remember you being about 5'10". Five, 5'9". Ten. Five, nine. <laughs> I'm five, nine. Five nine, that's it, right? Yeah, they both they both tower over me, um, but is, they're is mine. The, is the male man different in North Carolina than up here? <laughs> Just trying to figure. God. Yeah, yeah. So uh, now my youngest, he's a senior. I'm hoping they get a season in. They're supposed to start in February. Um, he plays receiver. He just got accepted to A and T. Um, there's some interest. The coach called him from Catholic University, um, interested in him playing some receiver. Yeah. So. Um, so it'll be either Catholic University or a and um, Both great boys, man. I adore my boys. Um, I asked my youngest son before I stepped down as head coach, I asked him, I said, hey, would you feel any type of way if I did not coach you all the way through like I did your brother? 
And I told my wife, I said, yo, if he has a problem with it, I'm not stepping down. I cannot allow, I can't have him feeling slighted. Um, and just as sincere as he is, he's like, nah, dad, I'm good with it. You, 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 you need to do this. And um, it, it just made my heart sing, man, that he was, he's a considerate kid, really, really considerate. And that just, it made it, it made it, it was difficult to step down, but it made it easier. But um, both, both boys are good, man. Appreciate you asking. That's good. That's good. Now, now, now that you're, 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 you're coaching, you're teaching, can you tell me a little bit about your uh, restorative well uh, consulting agency? That you, are you in, are you running that, or is it yeah. a collaborative group? Or it's mine. Uh, it's mine. Yeah, I was introduced to restorative practices about a year and a half ago. I had not had time to really look at it. A good family friend, uh, y'all you know, know Joe Hargrove. His wife Chella um, has been with a company called International Institute of Restorative Practice for years, and she was telling my wife, "Hey, Eric needs to look at this. You know, this is right up his alley." And I was coaching, I didn't have time. And when I stepped down and finally looked at it, I was like, this is incredible. Um, restorative practice is a social science that deals with uh, relationships and community. Um, and it, it is, to me, it's the answer to a lot of our society's ills um, because it is, it's a framework that helps you understand how to build connections, how to build a sense of community, particularly in education, but really in any facet, but also how to repair harm once it's been done. Um, and I've just fully immersed myself in it. I just, I got my first master's in 2010. I told myself I was done with school and um, I, I jumped back in. So I just finished a graduate certificate in restorative practices. This, I just finished my last class a month ago. Wow. That's how deep I am into it. And so, you know, being in education for over 20 years and, and seeing good teaching and seeing bad teaching. Um, I, a lot of my work is with at-risk youth. Um, and it's, it's like it's like coaching like you you get the best out of your kids when you when they know you care about them it doesn't matter if they're starting or coming off the bench when they just know that you genuinely care about them you're gonna get the best out of them it's the same for students you know i would be asked like how can you get this kid to do this how can that why does that kid act like this in your class and not in these other classes i talk to them like i, I find out what's going on with them if there's an issue i don't just con consider that a bad kid i'm gonna get to the root of the problem like if i know i didn't do anything to the kid then his anger or angst or his or her, it's not towards me. Right. Let's get to the root of the problem. Right? Restorative practices has helped me and others do that. So start up, yeah, uh, it's called Restorative Well. It's an educational consulting company that, um, that teaches educators and businesses, communities, anybody. Anytime that there's a, not just a conflict, but just a lack of productivity, um, there's a reason for it. So getting to the core of why there's a lack of productivity, why there's a lack of communication, um, often yields results. Um, and so that was the motivation behind doing it. Um, it it's, it's, it's a passion of mine. Like, I love the work. And so, yeah, it's restoredwell.com, the website. And, um, I love it, man. It's good work. Appreciate yeah. you asking. Yes, sir. We'll definitely, we'll definitely put the website up. I'll have uh, our editor put your website up for you. People can go check it out. No doubt. Yes, sir. Um, I just want I mean, to I just want to throw this out there real quick. He's come a long way since being in the fourth grade. <laughs> hey, hey, if I can do it, <laughs> if I can do it. And, and that's the beautiful thing about the opportunities I've afforded. Like, I think there were more kids that went to college from our football pro, maybe from our county. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. How, how, while you were coaching at your time, and, and that, that doesn't make how great you were as a coach, but how many kids were you able to help go to college, whether it was to play football or whatever? Yeah. Talk about some yeah. of those kids. Yeah, that yeah. Um, it was um, yeah, double digits, 20, 30. Um, it was a large number of kids who just never thought the greatest story, one of the greatest, there's lots of great stories. And, and um, let me go all the way back. When I was coaching at Wakefield, there was a young man, Jonathan Krug, that I coached, defensive back. I get, a, I get a, a Facebook message one day, and it's Jonathan Krug. Now, mind you, I haven't seen him since I coached at Wakefield in 1996 or seven. And he's like, hey, it's Jonathan Krug. I just, I need to talk to you. And so we get on the phone, and this man is telling me how I impacted his life. He's a successful businessman. He was like, coach, it was, your teaching and your coaching helped me be the man that I am. My wife will tell you, I'm sitting there crying, like, yes, it's unbelievable. 
Like this, and this is like back then. I just screamed and hollered like Ronnie Fowles. Like I went, <laughs> yeah. But but the one thing I did do, I he knew that I cared about him. He knew that I loved him. He knew that, right? So all through all the screaming, he knew that it was it was it was some deep caring about him. And he said that's what resonated with him. Like he got that, and it helped sustain him. It helped grow him. And man, that was just beautiful. So I get a young man at Southwest. 6'2", 185 pound, walks in the building. And I'm like, oh my, yo, you play football? Yes, I do. Um, okay, where are you coming from? He's new to our school. He's a junior. You know, I transferred from this school, this school, this school. I said, okay, you want to play football? All right, so he goes on to class. First thing I'll do, I go check grades. <laughs> He's got a 1.6. I'm like, no, you're not playing here. <laughs> it does not happen. So the two previous schools he had been to, he was allowed to do summer league, seven on seven and all that stuff. Come to the season, he's an elder. We can't play. So he's not played a down of high school football. I'm like, listen, you've got God-given gifts, right? That I'm sure you've got some ability, but you will never utilize them, son, if you don't take care of this. Long story short, this young man goes from a 1-6, he leaves us with a 2-5. Um, and it, it got to the point where his mom was like, hey, you just, you just kind of take care of him. I don't know this football stuff. Can you just guide him? And uh, you know, mom trusted me. He trusted me. He goes to Lewisburg College. I take him to Lewisburg. He goes there for two years. Um, goes to Towson, gets scholarship to Towson, plays there for two years. So he just graduated, man. Gets his degree. We thought he was going to get drafted, but with everything going on, that didn't happen. Um, he already had two teams in the XFL that wanted him. That shut down. So he calls me one day not too long ago. He's like, coach, the coach at Lewisburg wants me to come coach. And the whole time I'm telling these kids, like, you're great. Your, your, your potential is limitless. If you make the right decisions and make a commitment. So you needed two things to play for me. You needed character and you needed to be, you need to commit to your academics. Like, because what I had experiences, I was not going to let any kid that I had personal dealings with not have the opportunity to do something because of their grades, right? Reach. And so if you didn't have character and if you didn't have a commitment to your academics, you couldn't play for me. And that was a hard sell in the beginning, right? Um, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't waver at all. And as a result of it, that young man in particular changed his life like he calls me pop he calls me he's like he's now coaching in college and, and, and he'll likely get drafted I think he will once things kind of pan back out incredible athlete Mantrell Reeves it's an incredible story man I'm just fortunate to be a part of stories like that but it's because of those experiences right so I share it's difficult as I share the story about me failing I share the, the difficulties about me struggling in school like like goals did we didn't take it serious we didn't um, take advantage of some opportunities we had, but the beauty of it now, we're able to impact young kids in a special way, man, so that they don't have to, they don't have to experience what we did. Yes, sir. Love it. I love it. I love it. Great story. Great story. I mean, yeah. Buck and I go, both go through that on a daily, as you know, oh, yeah. you went to. <laughs> Hasn't changed much. And, you know, we, we get blamed for when kids fail or whatever Absolutely. it may be, like, you know, we get it, but you know, we try our best to, to get these kids to understand that yeah. it's so much more than basketball. But to us, I think it's to the, these kids, it's so much more than Arlington. They, they, they just think that Arlington is, that's it. That's There's it. so many other avenues out there that we're trying to get these kids. And we've done those things, E. We've taken kids on trips, piled them up in our minivans and our cars and taking them places. Oh, and yeah. that's we, all we knew. And we're continuing to do that. You know, yeah. it's been 19 years that we've been at Wakefield. And I think about it's that. It's been beautiful. Y'all have done a incredible job, man. It's, it's, it's impressive to see. Yeah. Well, we've had great guys to look up to, you know, you and, and countless other guys in our countless neighborhood that, yeah. that, you know, we are still feeling like we're still trying to make proud. Yeah. You know, people still call me Little Tony. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm always going to be Little Tony, but at some point, I'm like, all right, damn it, I'm the coach, you know, but I'm still Little Tony. I promise y'all won't call you that tonight. <laughs> I forgot, man. This Listen, Buck, do you have anything else for our, our, our wonderful guest? I mean, I, I just love him to speak, my man. I mean, yep. I mean, speaking knowledge and, and truth. I, I'm still, I'm amazed. I'm just stuck. I'm listening. <laughs> I, 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 everything I, he's saying, right? Everything he's saying is like, 
yo, this is real talk. Like, I think this is one of the shows where I, I sat like, I'm listening because I'm, I'm getting educated, man. So I hey. appreciate everything that, that you've talked about today and sharing your story and that you're continuing to help kids out, even though you're not coaching. But didn't you just recently start a new job? I did. I did. Just this past Tuesday, man, I left my school after 15 years and it was very, very difficult. Um, you know, one of the greatest things I've been able to do outside of coaching is coach kids towards graduating from high school. My position was a graduation coach. And in my office, man, I, I had a wall. I call it the wall of fame. And I had, I don't know, 40 pictures of kids who no one thought they would graduate. I had their graduation picture on my wall. And um, my, my principal will tell you, the day I was taking those pictures down, man, I had not looked at some of those faces in 10 years, 12 yeah. years. I remembered every story. I remember every home visit. I remember every grandma, aunt, uncle meeting that we had had. I remembered every time they sat in my office and cried and wanted to quit and cussing teachers out and all of that. I cried like a baby taking every one of them pictures down, man. It was, it was, it was difficult. Um, but yeah, it was an opportunity that I thought was really, really good. Um, I, I talked to my players and my two boys about stretching yourself and, and, and reaching for, for things that you maybe didn't think you could accomplish. And this was an opportunity to stretch myself. And I said, I can't talk to kids about stretching themselves and, and getting outside of their comfort zone if I've got an opportunity to do it and I don't do it. Right now. I'm talking about both sides of my neck. So took a job. It's a, it's a great, great position with, um, it's a, a partnership with UNC uh, Greensboro and the Department of Public Instruction for North Carolina. And it's overseeing grants for 21st century learning centers, which are enrichment centers that support at-risk youth. And so the, the guy that hired me, he said, what attracted me about your resume was your work with at-risk youth. And he said, I tell you, he said, I came from a school. It's going to hurt you not being in direct contact with students every day. He said, but you're going to be in a position to impact students on a greater scale. He impact policy that impacts students. And it was something I couldn't pass up. So I just started um, brand new, started on Tuesday. Um, still missing the kids, still missing my old crew, but I'm um, excited about this new, this new journey. Congratulations. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, let, let, let me ask you a question. In, in, in your own words, yes. in your own words, how would your family and friends describe Eric Green? Um, fun. Fun. Yeah, I've got a group of friends like Joe Lowe. Y'all talk, when Joe Lowe said I wanted to quit, they would put that jersey on Joe Lowe, and we wanted to hit him so bad. And this is what Joe would do. He knew we had to pull up, so then he would turn into Earl Campbell and try to run us over. <laughs> he told us. Man, but practice was like a comedy show, man. Bill Hargrove, Smurf, Kevin Gaskin. It was a comedy show, man. It was, it was hilarious. Billy Barnes, Tony Wallen. Practice was so much fun, man. Um, and so they would, my nickname was Baby E. People call me Smiley. Um, he would just say he likes to have fun. Man. He's a fun-loving guy. And I, and I see it. I truly do. <laughs> I mean, I remember a time where we took a road trip <laughs> down to James Madison, man. I mean, that might have been the best, best. I mean, think I was in, I was a, uh, might have been a junior. We were in high school. Right, I might have been a junior. Yeah, I might have yeah, my senior year high school here. Yeah. First time hanging out with E. Rainey, man, you know, I had a ball. All I can say is I had a great time hanging out with you, man. I mean, that, and that day that I hung out with you. Yeah. We had, great, we, had, we, we had great conversation, right? Great, great conversation. Great conversation. I mean, All I know, conversation. listen, I know I didn't ride with you guys, but I was there, and I remember, you know, we knew E. e, e Rainey, you know, it was almost like my favorite movie, Braveheart. Like <laughs> when I hung out with Eric, I was like, you know, like, William Wallace is seven feet tall. Eric Rainey's five nine. What? That's him? So, the lore of Eric Rainey. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, changed everything about my about you, Eric, man, you know. I can say, I, hey, I guess he had a pair. <laughs> I gotta ask you one question, E. Growing up, I remember you playing football course at Wakefield. You was the man. I thought. You were so much better at linebacker. Yeah. I'm hearing you talk about you calling offenses and all this type of stuff. Dude, you was a linebacker, and I couldn't remember. But you played running back. What, I, what were you better, linebacker or running back? 
linebackers, no doubt. But I, but I, I average, hey, ask Frank, I average 9.3 yards per carry as a fullback. Wow. 9, 9.3 yards per carry as a fullback. So I remember one time the biggest game had to be 88. It wasn't the biggest game, but it was the biggest Bo Jackson versus Boz. And it was you and Juan Craddock. Hey, he get props now. He get props. Everybody couldn't wait for Craddock and E to hit, yeah. and y'all yeah. did. We did several what times. Happened? What happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a stalemate. It was a stalemate. Like I didn't go nowhere. He ain't gonna. Know. But we both was like, okay, this dude. It's like when me and Warren hit. Yeah. Like you knew who was legit. Yeah. You knew yeah. who was legit. I yeah. just remember Craddock, Craddock was legit. Yeah, Juan Craddock and Eric Randy. Everybody, they couldn't wait for that game. <laughs> Everybody talked about that game. Man, number 44 for Wakefield. That's Eric, I got. So, Buck, any just questions? Wanna, yeah, I got, I got five, you know, the, the quick session, you know, just yeah, gotcha. this or that. Okay, you got to choose one or the other, okay? Yep. Uh, Facebook or Twitter? Facebook. Old school. Old school. Okay, okay. Money or free time? Money. Rather watch TV or read a book? Read a book. Okay. Winter or summer? Summer. Last one. Would you rather work hard or play hard? I like working hard. Yeah. I like working hard. Yeah. And I think that sums up Eric Rain. <laughs> I would like you to ask that question, Buck. We're in the fourth grade. Read or watch TV. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Two I, remotes. I, Two remotes. I just got a text from uh, Ron Fouts. <laughs> hey, ask Eric Rainey, who's the best player he ever played with, and who was your best coach? Best player I ever played with? That's hard, man. Hey, James Brooks. JB, man, I, me and JB played against each other, Bearcats, Black Knights. JB was the coolest. JB had the coolest face mask, man. Just everything about JB, you know, when he came to TJ, all the girls was like, ooh, JB, man, Chris McPhail was like, who is JB? Like, why, why are y'all, ch our cheerleaders cheering for this dude? Like, what in the world? And then we get to Wakefield, man, and play together. And then we were fortunate enough to go to Fairham and play together. You know, he's, he's a tough, 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 pound for pound. JB was that dude, man. Yeah. And that, that's what Red Bones was in, E. That's all. <laughs> Had to be. Had to be. Because I was hating. I was hating. <laughs> Chocolate Brother was hating. <laughs> oh, man. Now, what, what about your best coach? I've had some great coaches, man, but I, I hands down have to be uh, Terry Collins. Yeah. Again, for what, what he did for me, I just – I'll never. It just it life changes. Right, right. Coach, Eric, Coach Collins is living in Michigan now, right? He is. So we we had another upset game. We beat one of the other high schools for the first time in 17 years. I walk off the field, man. They storm the field, and I'm celebrating. I walk off the field, and Coach Collins is there. He had contacted my brother and my wife, and they somehow he flew down. This dude's at my game, man. Again, stuff that, you just, that stories are made of. Coach Collins was there. And I'm like, of course he is. It's just it's who he is. Well, right. we, we, we send out donation letters for people to help out kids in our basketball program. I'm, I get a letter from Michigan. <laughs> Coach Collins had made a donation to the basketball program. I've never played for Coach Collins. I know about him. I knew him when I was in high school. But he makes a donation to the basketball program. Years after he's been gone from Wakefield, still continue to help kids out. So I definitely special, want to give a special, shout out to Coach Collins as special, well. Special dude, yeah. man. Special dude. Great special guy. dude. That's that warrior love, man. Yes, sir. Yep. Warrior love. Yeah. Well, I think this is going to wrap us up today. This is a great show, man. I, I hope everybody got an opportunity, one, to, to understand who this man is, Eric Rainey, um, the things that he went through in his life and how he's better than himself, uh, not only himself, but his family and, and, countless of kids that like he talked about the wall with the kids in there that he's helped and and not being uh, uh you know someone to hold back i mean hearing your story about taking those pictures down off the wall crying i, I can see that and and that that shows me a lot about you know who eric rainey is and not just the football player the baseball player but what happens after the, the air is out of the ball 
and, and you can't hit a, ba a baseball anymore, what are you going to do with your life? And E, you have been a testament to what it is to, to grow up and to be a man, but also give back. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank you. And, and when Buck and I was going over our list, I mean, it was hands down, not even a debate that <laughs> we want to talk to Eric Rainey for the things that he's done and the things that he's still doing. So E, thank you very much, man. Well, I, I appreciate it. And I, I, I can't leave without just saying, man, Lena and Fred Rainey and uh, Dion and Reggie Rainey. I, I am what I am. Uh, my two brothers, incredible, and my mom and dad. I'm blessed beyond measure, man. I was just, I was raised with some incredible people around me. Um, and I'm nothing without them. Uh, you know, all the compliments I get, I credit Lena and Fred Rainey and, and Dion and Reginald Rainey. Incredible people. Oh, damn, I just got a text from Dion Rainey. <laughs> Yo, Eric, it was I that pushed him. <laughs> End on that note. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Thank you, man. Love you, man. Love you, man. Love Love you, man. Hey, appreciate right. it. Yes, sir. I'm doing a great job. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank yes, you. sir.